Welcome to our Reflection for Learning video. Minute papers can help students explore and retain concepts in ways that have meaning for their own contexts. In particular, they provide the opportunity to think deeply and critically about concepts that have been presented to them. This can trigger engagement with metacognitive strategies. In the online environment, paper, of course, has a very different meaning, especially as in the traditional sense, minute papers can provide non-identified feedback on how and what students are learning. Use of an online form could be one useful uh, tool for facilitating anonymous posting in that regard. <clears throat> Now I'm going to ask my colleagues to think of a specific concept that you have been learning about recently. Maybe it's something you have seen and what you have read. Maybe it is something you have heard in your conversations with others or something that you have heard through different media or seen online even. And in relation to that concept that you've been learning about, what was the most significant thing that you learned about that concept, something that really stood out as unexpected or meaningful or useful to you personally or professionally. And then I'd like to ask you, in addition to identifying something that was very significant, what sorts of questions you still have about that concept? So I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about that and then we'll come back for discussion. So I'm going to ask my colleagues if anybody is willing to identify the concept that came to their mind and the sorts of questions that they might still have about that. Would anybody like to volunteer? Marina. Just at our last few sessions, we've been focusing, and this is the concept that's coming to my mind now, online reflection. And what was the surprising thing is that there are so many ways of offering online reflection. And I don't think we're even aware of those poss all those possibilities yet. And then you ask the question that remains in my mind, and that is very much about, we have this concept of online reflection. We invite our students in, in different ways, but how do we support the process to really engage students in online reflection? So that's really at the top of my mind. Thank you, Anne Louise. Thank you, Marina. Would anybody else like to share their concept and the questions that they still have? Greg. Yeah, I've been thinking about following as in the sense of following instructions. Um, prompted really by the kind of, in a way, the paradoxical nature of it, because um, when you follow practice instructions, you're always doing something new. And the there's kind of a multiplicity of ways that people can do, the, do what seem like the same thing. Yeah. And um, and we don't, it's, and then that kind of raises questions about how do you actually um, uh, bring a level of kind of a little more closure than we normally get into sort of helping people to, to, to know what was intended. But at the same time, there's kind of a problem with the notion of intending a following because we can't actually describe the complexity of the processes we're actually inviting people to do. So there's, we use this word following like it's a sort of a relatively simple thing. Um, unreflectively, you might say. And when you might start to unpack it, it turns into this really vast complexity of, ex of diverse kinds of experiencing. And it's actually quite hard to corral, you know, once you actually start to uh, start to, uh, to tease that out. And some of these exercises show when all sorts of different things happen. Mm. So, thank anyway, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
I, I think what's interesting is, is that not only have you I, each of you identified concepts and questions associated with those, but in sharing them with us, you, you probably trigger further reflections in each of us um, in relation to those that you've identified as well as things that we might have been thinking about on our own. So, so thank you very much for keeping that cycle going. I'll just mention that in relation to uh, online engagement in this exercise, if you're doing the exercise with a group, um, you could have a dialogue as we are, but you could also ask participants to come up with their own two questions. It doesn't have to be the ones that I've asked here today. And people can upload their questions to an online forum, whether that's a poll everywhere or Padlet, something that allows the questions to be posed anonymously could be really um, useful. And as the moderator of that discussion, you can either choose to display the questions for others, uh, which might trigger reflections as they're, they're sitting there and having a, a discussion, or you can keep them hidden if you would like to moderate the discussion and, and choose one or two things that would be particularly useful. If you are interested in learning more about this particular activities or any of the other ones that we have brought together, please consult our Reflection for Learning Guide, which is available through the Advanced HE website. And we also welcome feedback on Reflection for, for Learning Exercises found in the guide and these videos as well. We're especially keen to know how the activities are being adapted for your context and the impact that they have for learning and teaching. So please contact us at this email, reflection for lc at gmail.com if you're interested in sharing your experience. Thank you.